shown this evening. It tells a very good and powerful story that CNN can never tell for us, BBC cannot tell for us. But it's as if the DJ knew what I was going to talk about this evening. It's in line with that, telling our own stories, right? My wife and I have uh, uh, long ties with Central Texas. We moved to the Dallas area 11 years ago from Killeen. And we are now in transition to come back to the Central Texas area. Come back to I'm here for now, but my family is still in the Dallas area. Uh, tonight, really, is a time of celebration and uh, reflection not long speeches, right? But I do want to say a couple of words before we continue to party on. Uh, if what we are, we are witnessing today is an indication that this association is going to be a very strong one. We have experienced uh, how associations are like in the Dallas area. I haven't seen the kind of unity that I've seen here today. We gather tonight not only to celebrate the birth of Ghana, but also to honor the generations who came before us. It is by strengthening the work of past generations, those who embodied universal values of freedom, democracy, that Ghana has managed to successfully evolve and endure. As JFK said, we celebrate the past to awaken the future. Growing up, we always look forward to six bikes. In fact, the month of March kicked off patriotism around us. However, we go through the history of Ghana, we come to know that it is not exactly the nation that was envisaged by the founders. Today, we complain about corruption, poor economy, energy crisis, water crisis, unemployment, and inflation. In fact, if you came from another planet and visited Ghana, you would think our politicians hate the people. They have presided over a system that has subjected people to poverty. But tonight, I want to shift our attention and focus away from the woes of the nation. I'm going to take some time to reflect instead on the big picture. The big picture. Many of us hear news from back home. We read the news, we watch CNN, we watch BBC, we watch YouTube. I do that every, every day, I watch YouTube, join online news. <laughs> but I also think it's important for us to look beyond the political debates. From time to time, it's good practice to go back to the fundamental questions. Things like, what has Ghana achieved in the past 60 years? And what would, what would we like to achieve in the next 60 years? We, in the diaspora, would also benefit from this type of reflection. In all the confusion of partisan, political, economical, and social debates, I feel that we do not take enough time to reflect on the achievements of the past. Nor perhaps do we think enough about the strategic long-term perspective and future. So today, I hope that together we can do just that. Uh, let us start by traveling back in time. Let's try to put ourselves in the shoes of a Kenyan citizen in 1957. Right? Whether we imagine this person living in Accra, Kumasi, Cape Coast, or Tamale, we know they were living in a country with technological, with little technological advancement, economic, and educational opportunities. Now, if this person were able to see what the future will hold from 1957 to 2018, they will find it in many ways almost miraculous. 
Ghana has enjoyed peaceful transfer of political power between different political parties. The nation continues to be a beacon of democracy in Africa. Indeed, through concrete actions, the people of Ghana have demonstrated firm adherence to democratic values and way of life. For example, Ghanaians love the power of protest. It is not necessarily a bad thing because that is how we know how to exercise our democratic powers. It is only two available, it is the only two available to the ordinary people to get attention of government. Peace, democracy, freedom, in turn, brought a measure of prosperity. Of course, we still face challenges on this front. The majority of, public, of the population still face difficult economic conditions, youth unemployment still remains a problem, and higher levels of inequality exist. Income inequality is also higher than it was a generation ago. But let us not forget the economic, political, educational, and technological advancements that have taken place since independence, however modest they may be. And Ghana's future prosperity is also a function of today's education, research, and innovation taking place in Ghana. Today, there are over 100 universities in Ghana. Alumni of Ashesi universities are developing and leading startups and driving technological innovation in Ghana. Lighty Arts, I don't know if you are familiar with the Lighty Arts. Lighty Arts is igniting African imagination by developing meaningful African games. Their mission is to bring an authentic Africa to worldwide audience through a meaningful games and digital habits. Dream Over, Dream Over, which is also founded by former students of Ashesi University, is leading the innovation in mobile and electronic wallet space in Ghana. It used to be that university graduates only sought employment in a bank, but that is all changing. In 2013, I had the opportunity to mentor two students from the University of Ghana Business School. They completed their university studies and team up to establish a furniture manufacturing company in Dodoa instead of seeking employment in the banking sector or even with the government. There's also the story of Kwesia Fie. Kwesia Fie is a graduate biochemistry student. He completed his studies and decided to start a business in bread making, bread faculty. So he did not go out there and seek employment from, uh, from the bank or from the government. There's also the story of a young lady that I met during my recent visit to Ghana. She studied economics and linguistics from the University of Ghana, decided that she was going to set up, uh, uh, set up her own beauty and uh, makeup artist academy. Yes, you know her, <laughs> right? You know her. And she travels all over Ghana, training people on how to uh, uh, dress up brides and bridesmaids and doing that herself and making a living for herself. You drive down the streets of East Legon, many of the startups that are springing up over there are, were established by students from Ghana, Ibebi Ashesi University, Central University, University of Ghana. So there are so many good things that are going on in Ghana. And these are very good stories that we need to tell. Nobody can tell those stories for us, but for ourselves.
There is hope for Ghana. There have been technological advancements, expansion in higher education options, etc. And this is why we should take more time to reflect on achievements of the past. What's more, politicians are not the only ones with a role to play. A prosperous Ghana starts with each individual, including us in the diaspora. We can each reflect on how we could contribute to Ghana to make Ghana a better place. We celebrate independence every year, but what is the meaning of celebrating Independence Day this year? This year's Independence Day should mark a new era. The duty of all Ghanaians is to make the, is to move the nation forward to the next stage. Thank you again for joining us to celebrate the past, present, and future of Ghana. On behalf of Central Texas Association of Ghanaians, I look forward to many years of prosperity and a stronger future. I was going to say, let us raise up our glass and toast to say happy birthday to the Republic of Ghana to wish the president and the government success in their efforts to bring prosperity to Ghana and of course to wish everyone good health and well. But we haven't opened a champagne yet, so we can't talk. So we'll leave them for later on. Right. Okay. So I'll leave you with this. There is no dream. There's no dream life. There is a life that you can create with wonderful moments and moments of difficulty. This is by Melissa Shasta, Melissa Sata, uh, an Italian. Thank you very much, and thank you for being here this evening.